Hi everyone, I'm Carmen, one of the educators at Curiodicy, and today we're doing a playful project here in the kitchen lab with some kitchen chemistry. Now today, the part of chemistry that we are going to look at has to do with Play-Doh. Play-Doh is really a part of chemistry that can help us discover how things mix, interact, and change along the way, whether they're physically mixing or chemically interacting. Let's see if we can figure out what's happening when we mix up some Play-Doh and notice those different physical and chemical changes along the way. I'll show you what you need to get set up. Here are the ingredients you'll need to gather from your kitchen lab back at home. Start with some all-purpose flour. This is the regular flour you would use for most common baked goods. You'll want some salt. This takes quite a bit of salt for our recipe, so grab the whole container, not just the shaker. Room temperature water. You can color your water with your favorite food colorings. If you haven't already practiced mixing and noticing what colors and shades you get when you combine these, maybe try that first. And then finally, some vegetable oil. So those are the things you'll need to get started with. Let me show you the measuring tools you'll want to have on hand. This project can get a little bit messy, so it's nice to have your measuring tools already on hand. You'll need something that can measure one cup in liquid for your water, a separate measuring cup for one cup that you can use for solids, like the flour and the salt, something to stir with, something bigger to stir with. Ultimately, you'll want to end up using your hands, though. And one tablespoon. We'll be combining this recipe in a large mixing bowl, and it's a good idea to have a cutting board or a clean counter that you can use to take this project out. For part of our experiment, you'll also want to have some sort of sifting device, either like a grease screen or a strainer like this. That'll help you study some of the mixtures and chemistry that's happening with our Play-Doh. Measure out two cups of flour and place them into the mixing bowl. They don't have to be super leveled off because you might need to add a little bit more if your Play-Doh gets sticky. So do your best of estimating. One cup of flour and go ahead and add one more. Measure out one cup of salt and add all of that to the flour mixture by pouring it on top. You can use your hands or a mixing spoon to combine these two ingredients gently so that none of the flour comes out of the bowl. As we mix the flour and the salt together, see if you can notice how it changes. Go ahead and feel. When you rub the mixture together, can you notice that the grains of salt are still much rougher than the soft pillowy flour that's surrounding them? This is an example of a mixture where only a physical change has happened. We've put the flour and the salt together, but we can still tell them apart, either by sensing them with touch, it would be hard to see, but maybe you could notice. Another way you could try is by using a tool. So if we take our sifter and we put a little bit of our flour mixture and try to sift it down through can we notice if one of the grains gets left behind? Go ahead and feel inside of your strainer. I noticed that in my case here, more of the salt got left behind inside of the strainer and the flour was able to get sifted out. Since we're still able to use physical measures to separate out these two ingredients, no chemical change has happened, just a physical mixture. What step in this recipe do you think might become a chemical change? Let's see and check it out. This recipe needs one cup of water. Don't add your cup of water into the dry ingredients. Pour it and measure it in a separate container. I recommend a clear container so that way you can see the science that we're going to do next. Once you have your water in your clear container, find some food coloring. This step is optional, but it makes it a little bit more fun. Pick a food color that you want to add and darken the water to the shade that you like. 
You can always add a little bit more later, so you can go ahead and try to make a shade that looks interesting to you. Give your colored water mixture just a swirl to combine the colors together. The next ingredient is one tablespoon of oil. My oil is corn oil and it looks yellow like this. What do you think will happen when we add this oil into the mixture of colored water? Let's find out together. What did you notice about when the oil landed on top of the water? I noticed that originally it looked like the oil was making bubbles and then flattened to completely cover the top of the cup. Did that happen to yours too? And then when I look from the side, I can see the yellow layer of oil sitting on top of the colored water. I wonder what happens if I give it a stir. Give yours a stir to see what you notice. It looked like the oil and water mixed, but now as it's sitting over a little bit of time, I can see small bubbles of oil rising to the surface. It looks like our uniform layer of oil right on the top has returned. This is another example of a mixture. Nothing chemically has changed about the oil or the water. If I wanted to separate the oil from the water, do you have any ideas of a tool that I could use? I'll give you a hint. If you've ever made soup before and strained the top of your broth, you might have used some of these tools. Since the water and oil have different densities and chemical properties, it's hard to mix them together by stirring or shaking. A chemical change must happen in order for these to combine in a solution. Next in our Play-Doh, here comes the messy part. We have one physical mixture here, our dry ingredients with our salt and flour, and then we have our wet ingredient mixture here with our oil and water. Go ahead and take your whole cup of oil and water and pour that into the mixing bowl. You'll want to have a large and sturdy mixing spoon ready, something like a wooden spoon or a rice paddle, in order to move the dough around. Go ahead and stir this gently until all of the ingredients are wetted and then you'll have a chance to squeeze the dough with your hands a little bit more to finish combining it. So what do you think about our mixture this time? Has a physical or chemical change happened? As you pick up a piece of your dough and start to notice different properties of it, decide. Does it feel like you could use your hands to separate out all of the ingredients again? Could you use your fingers to find the oil or to find the flour and the salt and lay them all out? Is there a tool that you could use to stir or unstir? What about your sifter? If I put this into something like a fine mesh, if I squeezed it through, would I be able to figure out which ingredients were which once again on the other side? Feel it with your hands. I'm guessing you could figure that out by noticing that it's really hard to decipher, to figure out and notice each of those different textures. If you've stirred your dough really well, it should all be combined and smooth, just like this.
What other tests did you try with your Play-Doh? I did try the strainer test and it definitely didn't separate out the ingredients, but I did get an entertaining result that you can take a look at here. Well, it doesn't look like we found any evidence that this Play-Doh is a physical change. Let's see if we can describe what type of chemical change we noticed. Can you make different shapes and decipher what the texture is of your Play-Doh? Mine looks really stretchy and it's pretty smooth. Try to stretch your Play-Doh apart and try to squish it together. How does your Play-Doh behave differently than the liquid ingredients and the dry ingredients when they're separated? What I noticed is that none of the ingredients can spill if I let go of them. They kind of just stretch or ooze from one place to another. Um, by the way, if your hands are pretty warm or if it's pretty moist in your kitchen right now, you might want to add a little bit of flour to your hands, like if you're making bread. That'll keep it from sticking to surfaces and from you. Alright, what's some of the science then behind the chemistry we made with our Play-Doh? It all comes down to protein. This protein in flour, it's called gluten. Gluten is what makes your bread stretchy, spongy. You can also find it in things like cakes and pastries. Basically anything that's made out of flour has gluten in it and gluten molecules can take on a lot of water. When we add the water to our gluten molecules, they absorbed and expanded, and then they combined in a longer form like this, where they were all connected together. Since the liquid expanded and connected all of those gluten proteins, we were able to get a brand new mixture with totally different chemical properties. Well, I hope you all had fun doing Play-Doh science. We got to discover hands-on a little bit of the difference between chemical mixtures and physical mixtures and what happens when you try to combine different things together. Have fun experimenting with your Play-Doh. See what different shapes, maybe even sounds and textures you can create. This will harden if you leave it out in the air, so I recommend putting it into a jar and storing it in the refrigerator so that way it stays nice and soft and pliable. Also, if you play with it using clean hands each time, it won't get moldy quite as quickly. Alright friends, well I hope you had fun doing some playful chemistry in the kitchen. Till next time, enjoy science back at home. <laughs>